Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In my latest Archaeologist's Guide to Minecraft episode, I built a brickworks and talked about the process of making fired bricks, and I thought you all would be interested in how to build a brickworks yourselves. Just like my video on building Egyptian pyramids, I'm going to walk you through the main choices that you're going to need to make when building a brickworks. But we're not gonna stop there because there are a lot of different types of bricks in the world and they are all made in different ways. So this video is episode one of a mini series all about different kinds of bricks and brickworks. So the first choice is what kind of bricks are you making in this brickworks? In this mini series, we're gonna be covering mud bricks, fired bricks, concrete bricks, and compressed earth blocks. So let me give you a brief description of what they all are. Mud bricks are made out of mud and a binding material, which is usually something organic like straw or rice husks, and mud bricks are usually dried in the sun. Fired bricks are made of clay or shale, and they are fired in a kiln. They're actually the only brick type, really, <laughs> that's fired, hence why they're called fired bricks. These bricks are the things that most of us picture in our mind when we think about bricks, and Minecraft's brick item and bricks block are both examples of fired bricks. There's also concrete bricks. Concrete bricks aren't fired, they're actually cured, and they're made out of sand, gravel, and cement. And the last main category of brick is compressed earth blocks or pressed earth blocks, and they're often abbreviated as CEB. Compressed earth blocks are made from fairly dry subsoil, which is soil that's underneath the ground that we walk on and that subsoil is often mixed with clay or even some concrete. A machine specially designed to make these bricks presses the soil together at a really high pressure to make a compressed earth block. In this episode, we're going to talk specifically about mud bricks and the choices that you'll need to make that only apply to mud bricks. Next episode, we're going to talk about fired bricks, the next episode will be concrete bricks, and then the next episode will be compressed earth blocks. And then, the final episode is going to be a kind of final stage choices that you really need to make no matter what kind of brickworks you're building. So you're going to need them for all of your brickworks. Also, at the very end, I'm going to release a full length video of all of the options and choices all together for anyone who wants to watch the entire thing in one sitting. Let's get started with mud bricks. As I said, mud bricks are made out of mud and some kind of organic material to bind it all together, like straw or rice husks or something similar. You might have heard of adobe brick too, and usually adobe bricks are the same as mud bricks. Adobe is actually the Spanish word for mud brick. Fun fact, we can actually trace the word adobe all the way back to the Middle Egyptian word for mud brick, so it's a word that's been around for a long time. But in a lot of the English-speaking world, adobe can now mean any kind of building or structure made out of earth, or it could even mean certain architectural or building styles, so things get a little confusing in modern English. For this series, when I say adobe, I mean the same thing as mud brick. Bricks that are made out of mud and straw or some other plant material or, or plastic fiber and then dried in the sun. But like, the mud and the, the binding material and the sun drying, those are the key elements. And you may have realized by now that the recipe we have in Minecraft for mud bricks is actually really accurate. It's just mud and wheat, which is standing in for straw, because that's what it does. It, I mean, it does that in the hay bales too. And sometimes this confuses people. They start to wonder why we don't need to put this in a furnace. But the reason that you don't need a furnace is because mud bricks aren't fired in a furnace. They're literally dried in the sun. So you don't need a furnace to make mud bricks. You also should be getting a similar amount of mud bricks for the resources you put in. So technically Minecraft could have made it like two mud and two wheat makes two packed mud, but why limit crafting to only even numbers when the one to one recipe is right there? Mud bricks are easier to make both in Minecraft and in real life, but they don't hold up very well over time as you saw in my Egyptian pyramids video. On the other hand, they're still pretty sturdy for a decent amount of time in the right conditions. The Grand Mosque of Genet was reconstructed in 1907, and it's still standing over a century later. It's also important to remember that buildings that people are still using get repaired and maintained. So there are lots of buildings in the world today that use mud bricks and are perfectly structurally sound. Basically, don't let the crumbling mud brick of Middle Kingdom Egyptian pyramids make you think that all mud brick buildings are completely unstable or something. That's, that's, not, <laughs> that's not the case. 
Okay, so that's that's a brief rundown on mud bricks. We're working with mud bricks this episode. The next thing you need to consider is why are you choosing to make mud bricks? That's it. That's the question. It's important to think about why you've chosen the type of bricks that you have. Is it easier to get the materials? Are we in a climate that works well for mud bricks maybe? Or maybe mud bricks are the traditional building material here so it's basically the default. Do people in this area like how it looks? Or maybe because mud bricks don't need super difficult materials, they're a bit more sustainable to make and you're wanting to do an eco-friendly kind of build. At least one study that I came across found that mud brick buildings cost less energy to make and emit less CO2 during construction than concrete buildings. They do point out that they didn't look at how much energy was used after construction to heat or cool the house, but it's still a compelling argument for mud bricks. Some other studies have found that using plastic or polystyrene fibers instead of straw could be a good way to recycle plastics and keep them out of our oceans. And mud brick or adobe buildings also stay much cooler in the summer and much warmer in the winter than buildings made out of stone or concrete blocks. If you remember all the way back to my video about Pictish turf houses, it's actually the same reason a lot of people in colder and wetter parts of Europe have built in turf throughout history. At the end of the day, mud brick is still mostly made of dirt, but so has a lot of the benefits to those turf houses that I talked about ages ago, like regulating temperature. And it's also a lot less likely to catch on fire because it's dirt. Whatever your reasons are for choosing mud bricks, it's a good idea to keep those reasons in mind as you build because they're going to affect what you build and why. So the next choice is where are you getting the mud for your mud bricks? This feels like an obvious and easy question, but where you get your mud is really important in making mud bricks. Mud is generally just wet soil, so this is more a question of where you're getting that soil and what kind of soil you're using. The best soils for mud bricks are clays, clay loams, silty clays, or silty clay loams. You can use other soil types, but you'll probably need to add either clay or sand or more straw or maybe even just more water to make it work well for mud bricks. We don't have much in the way of soil types in Minecraft, at least not ones that naturally generate. I would say if you want to stay true to the soils used for mud bricks, maybe make your mud pits near some clay deposits or even take soil from some nearby hills. You could also get your mud from near a river. The ancient Egyptians used mud from the Nile to make their mud bricks. But I also found an article that interviewed a mud brick maker with 40 years of experience in Iran who said that riverside soils were not good for making mud bricks because all that exposure to water makes them lose their adhesiveness. And actually, in that study, they interviewed 391 mud brick specialists across Iran, and every single one of them said soil from the plains or hills was far better for mud bricks than soils on or near the riverbanks. So how can the ancient Egyptians and the modern mud brick experts of Iran both have so much experience and such different opinions on riverbank soils for mud bricks? I couldn't find anything specific, but my guess would be that either the riverbank soils in Iran have a bit more sand or gravel in them than the soils along the Nile, or that the ancient Egyptians didn't have huge amounts of access to decent mud brick soils outside of the Nile, since most of Egypt is a sandy desert. So I would say take your pick. Are you in an area where you only really get dirt that's useful for mud bricks in and around the rivers? Or maybe you want to have a bit of a quarry up in the hills and a minecart system that brings it back down. Maybe you just make a pit somewhat close to where you want to make the bricks and fill the bottom layers with mud. It's entirely up to you. Personally, I like to keep these builds similar to what they would have been in the ancient past, but if you want to make it a bit more automated, some redstone farms fit in really well here. You could also build something around it to fit in with the architecture of the area, or you could just have the mud farm out in the open. Granted, if you opt for redstone farms, there's the question of where the materials for the farm are coming from, especially the water bottles and the redstone and probably the nether quartz. But hopefully by now you've realized that we could literally unravel all of these threads of where stuff is coming from and who makes it and where. We could unravel that thread for eternity and eventually we would just end up with all of the industries that we have in the world today, all of them interconnected and relying on each other. The point is, we can keep unraveling the thread, but it would be a massive rabbit hole. So I'm going to say questions about materials for redstone farms or water bottles are topics for a different mini-series because, because we do actually want to, you know, keep this as a mini-series. So the next choice is to do with the binding material for the mud bricks. 
What are you using to bind the mud together and where are you getting that material? I said before that mud bricks are made out of mud and some kind of plant material to bind it together like straw or rice husks. And that's all definitely true, but you do have a lot more options than straw or rice husks. If you do want to go with straw, then maybe build a massive wheat farm like I am here. Um, but let's let's talk about some of the other options too. For starters, any plant material like straw will work. So as I said, rice husks, but also grass or pine needles or palm fibers or wood chips, the list goes on. So if you're building somewhere where wheat isn't a major crop, you could consider using whatever the major crop or grass is in that area instead. Possible lore use for beetroot tops, anyone? I mean, I can't find anything specifically saying it's actually possible in reality, but I feel like it's reasonable in Minecraft and it gives another use for beetroot. <laughs> it's that's more than beetroot soup or red dye. Also, a few different studies have shown that you can actually mix plastic or polystyrene fibers and fabrics into the mud instead of straw, and they will perform the same role. They're also a binding material. In fact, using plastic and polystyrene fibers actually makes mud bricks a lot stronger than straw. And it's been floated as a way to both make mud brick buildings sturdier and recycle a certain amount of plastic or polystyrene waste that's in the world today. If you're opting for plants as your binding material, so straw or maybe wood chips or sugarcane stems, you'll need an area where that's being grown and harvested. If you want this area to actually help you make mud bricks, then I'd say stick with the wheat build that I showed earlier, since that's the recipe in Minecraft. But if it's a lore build, other options could be fun, like this sugarcane farm. If you're wanting to add some plastic or polystyrene recycling to these mud bricks, where is your brickworks getting those materials? Is there a company that collects the plastic and delivers it to the brickworks? And how much of this plastic does your brickworks need? You can also use automated farms here too. They're a bit more expensive materials wise, but it's pretty easy to do once you've gotten access to a good bit of redstone and iron. I've linked to the video that I used to build this wheat farm in the description below, so definitely check that out if you want to do automated farms here. The one downside to auto wheat farms is that we do need a two block high wall around it so that the villager doesn't escape and so that no mobs get into the farm to hurt the villager. But you can get some really nice wall or fence designs here to make it feel at least a little bit less confined. Next, you'll want to think about how these materials get turned into something that you can make mud bricks out of. Your mud brick makers will need to mix the mud and straw together. And even with the mud, it's important to have the right amount of clay, sand, straw, and water in the mix. Some soils are sandy and clay and damp enough in the right proportions that you don't need to worry, you just add the straw and mix it in. But if your soil isn't perfect, you might consider adding an element of your build where mud brick makers add some sand to the mud, or maybe there's a tank with some water in it that they can use to get the right dampness in the mud. And then it's important to think about how all of that, the mud, the straw, and any extra stuff to make the mud the right consistency, how all of that gets mixed together. Do your brick makers mix it by hand? Do they use a machine? Maybe they mix it with shovels or large wooden paddles or something. Sometimes mud brick makers mix the mud with their feet. And I've also seen videos of people mixing straw and mud together using a tractor. So think about each step of this process and whether you want to add something to your build to show that step off. Choice number six, where are you making the bricks? where you get the materials for the mud bricks, where you mix and hydrate those materials, and where you shape and dry your mud bricks might all be in the same place or it might be in different places. Mud bricks are often shaped and dried near the raw materials and where those materials are mixed together just because no one really wants to move a bunch of mud from one place to another. Mud is heavy because of all the water in it, so depending, it's generally done kind of close to the raw materials. It's definitely easier to organize a site where the materials are harvested, mixed, and shaped into bricks all in one. But if you're going more industrial with your build, maybe the mud is harvested farther away and it's dried out a bit before being shipped to where the mud bricks are made. Or maybe the straw is coming from much farther away. Maybe the mud bricks are made a lot closer to where construction happens instead of being made close to where the materials are. If you're opting for things to happen in different places, how do the mixed materials get to the site where the bricks are made, for example? Or how do the materials get to the place where they're mixed? Basically, consider where you build things and then consider how the end results of each stage or each location will make its way to the next location. And the next choice is what color are your bricks going to be? 
The color of your bricks in the real world is mostly going to depend on the materials that you use to make it, but we do have a little bit of wiggle room in Minecraft. Mud bricks tend to be brown in real life, but they can also be red, gray, a kind of sandy color, or something that's closer to white or black, depending on the mud that they use. So you can use the regular mud bricks block in Minecraft, but you can also switch it up a little. Endstone works well for yellow or buff colors, or you could use cut sandstone if you don't mind having a massive brick size. Polished blackstone bricks, deep slate bricks, or even deep slate tiles are a good dark gray or black colors. And you could also maybe use exposed cut copper for a more reddish color, but there's a bit of a shine to the texture that makes it look metallic still, so it might not work the best for your build. You could also use the regular bricks block or nether bricks or red bricks, but those are all modeled after fired bricks, so people might get confused in your build, and I would say they're also a little further out from the typical mud brick colors. So maybe stick to standard mud brick color, but also it's Minecraft, it's your story, do what you want. So choice eight, how are you shaping the mud bricks? There are actually a few different ways that you can shape your mud bricks. The easiest way or the simplest way, I shouldn't say this is easy, but it's the least complicated way, is by pressing the mixture by hand into a wooden mold that is the correct shape and size for your mud bricks. Now, remember that there's a lot of water in these bricks, so when they dry, they're going to shrink a bit because the water evaporates. So the molds that you use need to be the size of brick that will eventually shrink to the size of brick that you want. In the real world, brick makers coat these molds in sand or oil or maybe even sawdust so that the mud brick mixture doesn't stick to them. Something to keep in mind if you go for pressing the mixture into the mold by hand is that people don't all have the same strength. So not everyone can press the mud brick into the mold with the same force. They might take longer to get the same result, or the bricks that they make might be slightly less dense, for example. To make sure it's consistent, you could build a machine that presses the mud brick mixture into the mold with the same amount of pressure each time, which makes all of your mud bricks the same size and density. This is a great option if you have a larger mud brick operation or if you're building in a more industrial style, but it also works if you're building on the smaller side too. Next, how are you drying your bricks? Mud bricks are usually dried or even like baked, quote unquote, by laying them out in the sun. That only really works in sunny places, as I've kind of mentioned already. But in places like Northern Africa or South Asia, mud bricks can be dried pretty consistently. I would say maybe build a large field or like clear a large field in a sunny biome, but it definitely doesn't have to be a desert. I'm just showing this one in a desert, but clear a large field in a sunny biome and place a packed mud block, maybe every other block, just to show the different blocks themselves. And actually, you could have some mud in one area that transitions to packed mud and then transitions again to mud bricks in the final part of the field where they're ready for the next phase of drying. That way you can show all of the stages of drying without too much hassle. If you'd rather stick with the brick texture the whole way, then I would say maybe use deep slate bricks and transition them just into mud bricks and not worry about the packed mud in between. I have also seen people drying mud bricks under some kind of cover, like a roof over a platform or something. I imagine that that might take longer than if the mud bricks were uncovered in a sunny place, but if you're in an area that gets a lot of rain, especially with the weather updates to Minecraft where it now rains all the time, drying your mud bricks under some kind of cover might be the way to go. Drying mud bricks takes a while. I've seen estimates of a week to roughly a month or more, but once they've dried for a few days, you can start stacking them into small towers with holes that go through them to help dry the bricks without taking up too much space. Also, interestingly, I haven't come across any mechanized or industrial way of drying these bricks faster. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, I just didn't see it in my research. And actually, even the places that use machines to mix or shape the bricks, they're still drying them in the sun. But if you're building a larger brickworks, make your drying field match the sort of relative size of everything that you've already built. Like some of these, some of these brickworks have a lot of space where bricks are drying. <laughs> So, so if you're going on an industrial level, have a really big brick drying field because it, you're going to need it. Now that you've gone through this whole process with one type of mud bricks, we get to choice number 10, which is, are you making multiple different types of mud bricks? 
you're not actually limited to whichever type of mud bricks you chose at the beginning in terms of color and materials and such. You can make more than one type and add more than one, you know, station or build for each of those processes. Maybe your mud brick makers make several different colors of mud brick, which leads into a fun archaeology fact for you all. So archaeologists at Chatel Huyuk, which is a really famous Neolithic site in Turkey, found that different structures used different color mud bricks on different walls. So in one house, there were two walls that joined at a corner, and one wall had brown bricks and a yellow-brown mortar between them, while the other wall had light gray mud bricks and a light kind of brownish gray mortar. And in another house, this is actually like two separate buildings, another house had light yellowish brown mud bricks, but the building that it literally shared a wall with had brown mud bricks on its side of the walls. So different color mud bricks can mean different things. What's kind of weird about the Chatel Huyuk situation, and also just mud brick buildings in general, the mud bricks themselves, they tend to get covered up with mud and mortar to strengthen the wall of the building so that it doesn't, you know, it's less prone to collapse, that kind of thing. So the difference in color of the mud bricks that would only have been visible, like you would only see it when the buildings were being built, right? Because after that, it just gets covered up. But even so, as I'm sure many people who have worked in construction can tell you, the materials that people use to build their buildings is part of what communicates status to their neighbors, even if those materials get covered up in the end. Like I'm sure construction workers <laughs> are well aware of the differences in different types of materials, and when they get a fancy build that uses fancy materials, even if those materials are getting covered up, like they they know, <laughs> they know that they're using fancy materials on that building. And a lot of us will know as well just by looking at it. So, <laughs> so you know, just, just because it's only visible for a short amount of time, that doesn't mean that it doesn't serve a purpose or that they're not communicating anything. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. Neolithic Chatelhoyuk for you. <laughs> Differences in mud brick colors. I thought that was really fun. So do you make any types of mud bricks that are maybe cheaper or more expensive than your standard version, or maybe just different colors? And for each type of mud brick that you have, why would people want to buy those instead of any of your other types of mud bricks? And the final choice for this video, don't worry, there will be more, <laughs> but the final one for this video is, are you taking any steps to safeguard your mud brick buildings against earthquake damage? And which steps are you taking? In the real world, mud brick or adobe buildings are actually very vulnerable to earthquake damage unless there are specific techniques used when either making the mud bricks or when building the structure, like the building itself, to strengthen either the bricks or the building. Pretty much everywhere I read about mud bricks, there was a lot of discussion of how to protect the bricks or strengthen them against things like earthquakes, but also just to protect against general decay or pressure. A lot of studies that added things like plastic or polystyrene or wood chips to the mixture showed that those mud bricks were generally stronger than mud bricks made just with straw. And I also saw a lot of people talking about covering mud brick walls with mud or plaster to bind the entire wall together a bit better, which is why we see the smooth earthen walls in adobe or mud brick houses and buildings. Are your mud brick makers adding anything to the bricks or maybe even recommending certain building styles or practices that would protect the building from earthquakes or decay or other kinds of damage? Oh, okay. That is a lot to think about. It's not all of the choices to make, but it is a decent number to be thinking about while you wait for that final episode. Like I said, the other choices that you're going to need to make for a mud bricks brickwork also apply to brickworks of any kind. So I'm going to press pause on mud bricks for now, and we're going to come back to them at the end of the mini series once we've chatted about all the other brick types. If you're enjoying this mini series and you want to make sure that you don't miss the next episode, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you get notified when I release the next video. I'll also link to the next video in the series over here and in the description once it's published, and I've linked to the full playlist in the description down below. But if you want to know more about bricks in the meantime, check out my video on building a brickworks in my archaeologist guide series right over here. That's all from me for today. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!